What's going on, you guys? It's your boy Avery here, and I want to do a bit of a different video today um, because it's something I've been thinking about for the past couple of days between just things going on in my personal life, trying to find a job in the communications field, which is what I went to school for, which is like marketing, uh, radio, television, you name it. Like I would love to be in television or radio again. Between just personal things like that going on and then trying to play test in Yu-Gi-Oh and get better and try and figure out Tempai, possibly go to YCS Indie. There's just been a lot jumbling around in my tumor filled brain that I've been trying to figure out and I've been really trying to improve as a player. And this leads to me wanting to talk about my love-hate relationship with Yu-Gi-Oh. This is going to be a bit more of a different video. This isn't necessarily Avery the Entertainer, like, this deck is booty booty butt cheeks. This is more Avery the Player talking to you. And this all spawns from a conversation that I actually had with uh, Valley D a couple of nights ago. Shout out to him as always, my brother from another mother. Uh, some people have asked me in the past, like, why are you always shouting out that one friend? And it's because we've known each other for like 15 years. We met when I was 12. I'm 27 now. We've known each other for 15 years, but it hasn't been since like maybe a couple years ago that we reconnected because of Yu-Gi-Oh! And, you know, hang out whenever like I go down to Tampa for my, um, my MRI scans and stuff for my tumors down at Moffitt Cancer Center. Um... Or even just talking on Discord, meeting up at regionals, whatever the case may be, right? He's a much better player than I am. Leaps and bounds. Like, he's he's Super Saiyan Blue, and I'm over here at, like, Super Saiyan 3. Like, he's got me destroyed, right? And he talked to me after we were playtesting one night, because I was trying to play Volcanic FTK, and I tried learning the deck. It's very convoluted and complicated. It's very good. I see where it's good, but it's just not my play style. I'm more of a controlled and mid-range player, depending on the deck. And he was talking to me about how I worry about these edge cases, like worrying about things like Shifter, where if a deck is playing it, they have a 33% chance to see it, because three copies, 40 cards, you do the math. And he was talking about how he feels that I haven't turned that corner, so to speak, as a player, which he's absolutely right. And it's healthy to have these conversations. Like, it's not like he's busting my balls, right? Like, he is giving me genuine criticism and feedback as to how I can improve as a player. And you need that person to kind of check you, right? Like, you you don't want to think you are so good at this game that you know what you're doing when someone who may actually be better than you can say, hey, this is where you need to improve because you're messing up on X, Y, and Z. It's it's a great way to be able to look in the mirror and have that outside perspective looking in to tell you how you can be even better than what you are right now. Like for the longest time, like if you go back and look at my videos uh, when I was playing purely Sprite, I mean, I felt like I was on top of the fucking world. I mean, I felt like I was one of the best players I knew. Like, leaps and bounds better than most players here in Jacksonville, Florida. And that's not me trying to, you know, make fun of the Jacksonville community base. I actually really like the Jacksonville Yugo community. It's much better than what it was years ago. And we're going to be talking about that uh, because that all entices into this. Um, but I thought I was an amazing player. I felt so unfucking touchable Like, I felt like I was a god at this game. And you know what happened? Valley D takes his math mech build from, like, four or five months ago because he took a break from the game. And you know what he did? He clapped me three games in a row, full stop. Like, uh, it it was disgusting. I was so heated. I was so salty because I had just topped a regional. Uh, What did we get? Like, 22nd place or something or whatever it was? Like, we absolutely dominated that regional. And then we get clapped by Math Mac. Now, granted, we didn't play against Math Mac at all, but still, like, it was like, how did you just beat me, right? And so, like, that was like a check moment, right? And kind of like the other night, you know, he he checked me, and he's like, you know, you misplayed on this. You could have done this, this, and this. You need to stop worrying about these edge cases. You need to do this and that and the third, blah blah blah. Now, granted, again, I was learning the deck. If I would have had ten pie in my hands, I think it would have been a much different story. I think I would have been able to actually successfully play test with him that night. And I even texted him the other day, just apologizing. Like, you know, I feel like I'm kind of bringing you down as a player. Like, uh, you deserve better than trying to play test with me and like incite me or give me your insight. Like. 
because it's it's like someone who's up here trying to bring someone down here up to here because I thought I was up here for the longest time but because I had that third party looking in from that outside perspective so to speak I now realize that there's many things that I can improve on whether it's deck building whether it's my mindset you know anything like that and especially when it comes to the mindset a lot of that stuff can be applied to the real world whether it's your personal life work life you know, worrying about edge cases, you know, worrying about a situation that may never come up that you don't need to prepare for. And one of the things that he mentioned was playing IRL is the best way to get better and play test. And I absolutely agree with this. Like, if you want to get better at Yu-Gi-Oh, the best way to play is IRL, full stop. That's where my love-hate relationship comes with this game. I have talked about before in the past how I have been playing Yu-Gi-Oh! competitively for 16 years, right? I went to my very first locals two weeks before the name Fusion Deck was changed to Extra Deck. I remember I went to a locals. I was 2-1. They were taking forever to start the last round, so I left. Next week, I went 2-2, and and then, you know, that was what my record was after four rounds. Came back third week, and then uh, shout out to my buddy Charlie. I remember him standing there saying, your fusion deck is no longer called your fusion deck. It's now called your extra deck. I don't want to hear none of y'all calling it the fusion deck. It's now called your extra deck. And then you started seeing synchro monsters come out from all over the place. And so through these 16 years, I have seen a shit ton of formats. I've played a crap ton of decks. I played Necros tier zero and got clapped in an Orlando regional, went five and four. I went to YCS Atlanta. I've only ever been to like three or four YCSs, like YCS Orlando, Miami, Atlanta. Maybe I did Atlanta twice. I can't remember. Um, but that was where like one of the love hate relationships came from this game because of the fact I don't go to a lot of YCSs, like I haven't traveled very far. One of the things that, uh, Valley D told me was that, you know, did you expect to do well at your first YCS? I'm like, no, because I had never been to one before. And I honestly, out of the ones I've been to, I never expected to do well, like hopefully make day two. But his mindset is no, like I want to win a YCS. I want to top, I want to get better. I want to build a resume, whatever. And I don't care about building a resume, so to speak, because I just don't have that connection anymore. And that's not to say I don't want to be a competitive player. I want to get my invite. I want to go to Nats. I want to do well at these YCSs. I would love to one day go to Worlds, but it just seems so far out there. And that's because of the fact that why strive for something like it seems just so far-fetched and I know that there are plenty of players better than me at the game and that's not to say like it's a deterrent to myself but it's to say that you want to keep your expectations in check like if I go to YCS Indianapolis which I'm still debating on like ever since I had this conversation with Valley D I really just been debating on it back and forth if I really want to go but Rolling up to YCS Indianapolis, what if like I just scrub out? Like I go I go 04 and just drop. And then I'm heated like for the rest of the trip because I didn't get a single win at this fucking YCS. I'm playing Tempai Dragon. Like, what if that happens? Like, that's the reason why like I don't travel all over the US to events. Because could you imagine me living in Florida? Could you imagine if I went to say California? for a YCS, and I just get clapped five rounds in a row, and I don't get a single win, no matter how much I play test, like, what if that happens? I wasted hundreds of dollars on a plane ticket to go all the way to California, which is a dumpster fire in and of itself right now, not to mention that, pay out the wazoo for a hotel, pay the 20 plus dollars to get into the event, to get my cheeks clapped, like, that I guess that's more of a fear than more of an edge case than anything else, depending on how you look at it. But that's what I think about bringing it back to the community as a whole. I absolutely love the Jacksonville Yu-Gi-Oh community. I think the people that are in it now are leaps and bounds much better than the people that were in the scene when I first started playing competitively going to my first locals but eventually becoming a competitive player when I was 12 years old because there were some assholes in the community and not everybody was a jerk back then there were great people and I think that this has is like the underbelly of the game I think that this is something that's not discussed a lot 
And I want to talk about some of that because I think it really highlights the point. Um, But again, I want to push home the fact I'm not trying to hate or call out anybody that's currently in the community. If you're local here, the Jacksonville community, I'm talking about like the people that show up to like our locals, right? Like that are there on a regular basis, not people on like the Facebook page who like don't really play Yu-Gi-Oh anymore, right? Um, We all get along, right? Like if I see people, like I hang out with them and talk with them. But that's also the issue, right? I don't go to locals every Wednesday or every Saturday, every Sunday, you know, what whatever dates are are out there for Jacksonville. That's because of the fact that as I've talked about before on the channel, I tend to, whenever like a regional or like, you know, a YCS or something's coming up, I will buy whatever deck I want to play. And then I turn around and sell it and I keep, you know, the hand traps, the staples, right? Like, you know, I'm not going to sell my Forbidden Droplets. I'm not going to sell my Raigekis. I'm not going to sell my Monster Born. I am going to sell, for example, my Diabell Star Black Witches, my Wanteds, my Flamberge, my Promethean Princess, the Raging Phoenix, so on and so forth, right? And because of the fact that I don't see the community on a regular basis because I don't have a fucking deck to play, why am I going to sit on something that can get hit on a ban list and I lose my ass and money, right? I feel like because of the fact I don't see them on a regular basis and I don't build these relationships, I feel like I'm a fish out of water in the sense of I feel like I'm just a foreign person in a totally different world compared to when I first started and I was going to locals every week. I was meeting these people. I was getting to know them little by little over time. Now it's like I show up to locals and everybody's like, yo, Avery's here at locals. Like, what's up? Which... In a way, I appreciate, right? Because I don't see these people often. And so if they, I feel like at least I'm not seen as a scrub in the community because of the regional tops that I've had, um, because of how long I've been in the community. So I'm, even though I may be seen like a dinosaur, like an old man or a grandpa, whatever, I have that knowledge, like, you know, a back in my day kind of thing. So I have that type of insight into the game. So I guess that kind of garners some respect. But yeah, like they're like shocked anytime I walk in the logo. It's like, yo, like Avery's actually here. Or they may joke and say, what kind of, you know, table 500 deck are you playing? Because I'm usually playing something off the wall. But that's where I feel so foreign because I don't know these people. Like all of the people that I played with back at my, you know, first locals that I started going to when I was 12 either don't live in Jacksonville anymore. Like Valley D, for example, was because we met at a locals in Jacksonville. Or they just don't play the fucking game anymore. Like, it, it's a totally different landscape. Imagine if, like, you move to a different state or a different country and you don't know anybody. That's what it feels like when I go to locals. Like, again, I'm cool with these people. Like, it's not like they're dicks or anything. It's just, it's so foreign to me now. And on top of that, there have been some issues in the past. I'm not going to name names here. Um, but I am going to, you know, call them out for the bullshit. There was a particular player in Jacksonville who doesn't play anymore, garnered, um, a good reputation, meaning like he was a good player, but he fucking cheated. Perfect example. Oh, YCS Miami. I think that was the, I don't know if I mentioned that YCS, but that was a YCS. That was a YCS Miami actually back when, uh, Mermels and, uh, windups were seen play. My dad made day two with chamber and it was actually pretty crazy. He ended up losing to windups. But a particular player from Jacksonville played against him and cheated him with Monoglacia. Monoglacia, the Elemental Lord, was one of very few cards back in the day that had a hard once per turn restriction and you couldn't conduct your battle phase. If you summoned Monoglacia, you could rip two cards out of the opponent's hand, but it was a hard once per turn. So if you had access to three Monoglacia, you couldn't rip six cards out of the opponent's hand. You could rip two cards. That was all that you could do. You could not rip six. Well, he looped his Monoglacia and ripped my dad's hand. And then a mutual friend of... Well, I guess not a mutual friend. Well, yeah, mutual friend of the guy who cheated my dad. But he was a friend of ours. He tells me and my dad, like, yeah, so-and-so cheated you with Monoglacia. And, like, I kind of lost respect for him after that. Like, I've talked about him by name in the past on the channel. Again, I'm not going to name who. I'll let people figure it out. But he cheated my dad. And, like, he fucking knows that he did. And it's just kind of toxic. Like, I've met even players, too, who, like, would argue with me during like a match because they were salty and then like they try and act like all friendly like you know months later like a year later and uh, like I know what they did like I don't know what they were trying to do one story in particular that I have to talk about we're gonna call this person douchebag right Uh, douchebag was partners we'll call it in 2024 terms 
with another guy who I'm like still friends with to this day. I just don't really talk to him anymore, right? Um, at one of our locals um, in St. Augustine, for the Jacksonville player base who watches my stuff, you'll probably know, possibly know who I'm talking about. Um, but anyway, um, it was at a locals in St. Augustine, Florida. And there was a, a kid there. He was maybe 10, 11 years old. I was maybe 13. It was. It would have been around like September 2009, 2010-ish format. So maybe it was Edison. I don't know. Um, but he was a pretty good player. He talked with like a lisp. So I think it, like he kind of got bullied a lot at school and going to locals and playing cards was like his escape. Right. And like, I got along with him. Like I, I I'm, I'm a social butterfly. Like I'll be friends with anybody. Right. Like if I go to YCS Indy and you see me at Indy, don't be afraid to come up and say hi. Like I'll take a picture. I'll sign cards. Like I'll give you a high five. We can talk about how decks are booty, booty, butt cheeks together. Like whatever. Right. Um, well, this story I heard secondary from a buddy of mine who actually works at one of my locals, although I don't know if he still works there, but besides the point, uh, he has no reason to lie to me. So hearing this story secondhand isn't like, oh, he's just lying to you. No, like none of us at this locals liked Mr. Douchebag. <laughs> I don't even like calling him Mr. because he's only a couple years older than me and he's a dick. But besides the point, uh, Douchebag proceeds to tell this kid after beating him one time in a match that he is a homophobic slur, use your imagination, and that he sucks at Yu-Gi-Oh. And what happened? The kid went home that day crying to his parents. Apparently, his parents went and told the card shop owner what happened, and I still saw Mr. Douchebag at Locals anyway. So I don't know if the card shop owner didn't do anything about it, or it's just hearsay, so there's nothing he really could do about it. But luckily, Mr. Douchebag is no longer in the community. He now plays Magic. But he had a partner himself, if you get what I mean. And then he's going to use a homophobic slur towards this kid and tell him that he sucks at Yu-Gi-Oh. All because, like, Mr. Douchebag thought that he was God's gift on this green earth to this game. When yet his partner told me years later, like, no, he actually sucked at the game. Like, he was garbage. Like, how can I possibly try to form relationships in the Yu-Gi-Oh community when I have these examples to go off of and these stories that make me not really want to interact with people in the community. And for whatever reason, maybe this is, again, just because of the fact I've been around the community for 16 years, but for whatever reason, maybe it's just a Florida thing, but big events seem to attract the, like, bottom of the barrel type of people and like i'm not saying like people that drive crappy cars and that are poor and like put all their paycheck in you go i'm not judging like that i'm talking about more just bad behavior and by bad behavior i mean i've been to regionals in orlando specifically kissimmee so anyone that goes to kissimmee regionals probably knows what i'm talking about and i've seen like dudes with hoodies on outside in the corner of like the the venue hall the event hall uh exchanging we'll say substances that are illegal uh, with like hoodies up to make it not obvious or like some dude getting his rocks off making out with his girlfriend like they're about to just do it on the sidewalk right there when like there's little kids walking into the regional like it's really disgusting and for anyone wondering like Avery how is it that you witness these things if I lost or won early in a round I'd go out to my car have a snack have something to drink and I'm just sitting there people watching and you just see dudes making trades not with cards <laughs> <laughs> being uh, unlicensed pharmacists, we'll say, and then seeing a dude and his girlfriend like getting ready to just go to town right there at the like event hall because like he two owed a purely player, I guess. Like, and then the girlfriend like won at table four hundred. Like, it's comedic to an extent, but it's also just kind of disgusting that like these type of people especially like the ones doing illegal things like the making out thing with the significant others kind of like whatever right like just shield your eyes children i guess but more like the illegal substance thing right <sighs> again it comes back to i have this love-hate relationship with this game why do i want to blow my saturday interacting with a community that i feel so fucking foreign to that i don't know anybody again not that i don't get along with them i do but it's not the community I recognize, 
right? Similar to like how people say this this type of Yu-Gi-Oh, this modern Yu-Gi-Oh isn't what I recognize. I'm used to summoning my Beaver Warrior and setting a trap hole. Now modern Yu-Gi-Oh is a totally different thing. It's going to attract a different type of audience. And so that was one of the things I was trying to tell Valley D the other night when we had this conversation. But my my brain was so just out of gas at that point trying to play Volcanic FTK and kind of just feeling down about the whole situation that there is a lot to learn that I have to do to get better at this game as much as I want to be a Jesse Cotton or a Joshua Schmidt. It also applies to life though too because one of the things I'd love to do is make a documentary. I've been kind of bouncing ideas around my head. Could you imagine if I made an hour and a half long like documentary and I posted it here on the channel and we interviewed like Billy Brake from Konami or big name Yugi tubers. Uh, we interviewed people at our locals to see what they think about the game and its history and like where it could go from here. I'd love to do something like that, but I just don't know. And I feel like I'm just in a bubble of not knowing what the hell is even going on anymore. I don't know. It's it's just really weird and it's hard to put into words. But again, like why blow a weekend when I could like be chilling out at my house or going for a run or going to the club? And instead I'm going to go play cards and play test a deck that might be garbage in a month because information travels so fast now because of the internet, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. But then to sit down and try and play test with whether it's Valley D, whether it's Joe Blow, whether it's whoever, and then get judged for my plays just because they think that they're better than me. So they're instantly like supposed to be the winner and be the gift on God's green earth to this fucking card game. A, a card game made for children ages seven and up. But I guess these people don't have anything better to live for. So they have to be a god at Yu-Gi-Oh! And like make people feel bad about it. And like in that one example, calling a kid a homophobic slur and telling him that he sucks at Yu-Gi-Oh! And that he never comes back to locals. It's a tall ask to say to me, Avery, you're going to build a deck and you're going to go to locals every weekend when like you just got all this other shit going on and like you don't really want to interact with people who may not even give a crap about you or may just think that you're a scrub at the game and talk shit behind your back. And like you may be thinking, Avery, this sounds like high school drama because it is. And I'm not saying anyone in, in my local Yu-Gi-Oh community does that. It's just the things that I've lived through. It's the things I've experienced. You, If you're in something for over a decade, you will experience a lot of fucking things throughout your lifetime, good and bad. And at the same time, that's why I try and focus on all the friends that I've made along the way. At the same time, all those friends I've made along the way have either moved away or just don't even play the game anymore. But here I am trying to go to locals and play test and somehow get better. And I know I'm not a scrub. I am by far a much better player than many others. I would consider myself in the Jacksonville community among the top 20. Maybe that's a tall ask. I'm sure someone will be a smart ass and say, you're number 20 or 21. Sure, like I, I, I can roll with the punches. But the point that I'm making is that I feel like I'm a good player and... I feel like I'm not the only one who's maybe experienced something like this. And as much as I want to get better, as much as I want to be someone that Valley D or whoever else feels like they can play test well against me or see me as a good player, like I guess being seen as a good player is cool, but I don't know. Maybe someone will just say you don't want it bad enough. You're right. I don't want my cancer to take me off this earth sooner than earlier. I guess I just have to get good, right? But it's out of my control. You know, some days feel like you're just slowly withering away like Thanos snapped the Infinity Gauntlet. Other days you feel like you're a god at Yu-Gi-Oh. Guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below. This has just really been on my mind and I wanted to just get it out into words and kind of talk about some of the things I've experienced playing this game for 16 years. Not all of it bad. We've talked about good stories. God, I can think of so many funny things that have happened. Like, whether it's like 
I don't know, uh, recognizing a Yugi tuber and they're like, listen, man, I gotta go take a dump. I'll be right back. Or taking what many Yu Gi Oh players call the pregame shit after, right after you register for that regional, pay your money, and you run into that regional venue and you blow up that bathroom, and then you run out of toilet paper before round one starts. Like, so many funny memories have happened like that. But, guys, thanks for watching. I love you very much. And I'll speak with you again very, very soon.